Now, this video is not just for latent flowers, but for anyone who would call themselves a Christian, yet deny biblical doctrines that point to the sovereignty of God. And this is not just advice for false teachers like Leighton, but also for new converts, you guys who are newly of the faith. As you comb through the scriptures, as you make your way through the word of God, you will, you will come across things that you will not initially agree with. Trust me, you will. Okay. You're going to read it for the first time and you're going to say, uh, I don't like that. I don't like how that sounds. That doesn't make much sense to me. I don't know if I, it's, trust me, it's going to come. Okay. And the reason this happens in the early years of the, your Christian walk is because for the first time in your life, you are being exposed to the truth. And that truth is being banged up against the heretical ideas you have held onto your whole life. Every sinner in this world has a self-perceived erroneous belief about themselves, how God views them, and how God handles his love for them. And when, for the first time in your life, you are exposed to the truth, the true God of the Bible, this is when the crucifying of the flesh begins. And it's hard. It's very hard. It was hard for me initially. I remember my first year in the Bible, coming across things I didn't like. And I was so stupid that I actually told myself in my pride and arrogance that my way was better, that my way made more sense than how it was laid out in scripture. Uh, it's just ridiculous. But praise God that I do remember the day that I stopped fighting and repented. I remember telling myself, do I know more than God? No, I don't. OK, so it's that humble nature, that crucifying of the flesh, that denying yourself. OK, and uh, grasping what the Bible says and teaches, because that is truth. So here's a clip of R.C. Sproul pretty much explaining his first struggles in this area. But, you know, it was Edwards, really, who drove me to uh, submit to the doctrines of grace. I fought the Reformed faith for five years in spite of great mentors who were trying to persuade me of the articles of, of uh, Reformed theology. But as Roger Nicole used to say, that we were by nature <clears throat> Pelagians. And so it's hard to... Uh, to bend the mind to the sovereignty of God in the way that the scriptures teach it. But I had a little card on my, on my desk in seminary that said, you're required to believe and to teach what the Bible teaches, not what you want it to teach. <laughs> and it wasn't until I took an in-depth course uh, of Edwards where the whole course was basically on freedom of the will. Gerstner? Yeah. And, uh, and I said, was that Gerstner? Yeah. Sorry. Gerstner used to say, you know, about Edwards that he didn't just defeat his opponent, but when he was finished, he dusted off the spot where he stood, you know. <laughs> he, he dusted me off pretty well, and uh, Edward's treatment of Romans 9 persuaded me of the truth of the sovereignty of God in, in election. But my basic response, John, was, okay, that's true. I have to believe it. I have to teach it, but I don't have to like it. <laughs> I was really wrong about that. And it's, you know, like you learn a new word and you hear it every time you, you walk down the street. Well, once my eyes opened to the sovereignty of God's grace, I found it on every page of the Bible. And I began to see it in its sweetness, not just in its truth, but I began to see the sweetness of divine grace. And I thought, where have I been all my life that I was fighting, kicking, and screaming against the supremacy of His grace? I mean, that's just nuts. That's where I was. I was nuts until I began to see it. I can't point to a moment, an hour, and a day where it suddenly dawned on me that this was a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful thing that the Lord had done.